On Tuesday, April 17th, 2012, Detective Ian Nickel and Staff Inspector Bryce Evans of the Toronto Police Service Financial Crimes Unit hosted a press conference at Toronto Police Headquarters in relation to ATM skimming devices targeting GTA and Toronto hospitals. Um, a core function of policing duties is the delivery of crime prevention programs and public awareness messaging. I want to personally thank the media today for assisting the Toronto Police Financial Crimes Unit today in delivering of a public message involving ATM skimming devices that have been seized from ATM machines located within hospitals. Since late November, the armed guards who service the majority of the ATM machines located within the hospitals have seized skimming devices that have been affixed to the actual uh, ATM machines. Skimming devices have been seized from the following eight hospital, eight hospitals. Uh, Sick Kids Hospital, Scarborough General, North York General, Oakville Trafalgar Memorial, Lake Ridge Health Bowmanville, South Lake Health Centre in Newmarket, Toronto East and Toronto West. The last two skimming devices, which will be on display today, have been seized from the Toronto East and Toronto West hospitals this past Wednesday on April the 11th. We believe that the hospitals are being targeted because of the high volume of pedestrian traffic and the fact that the ATM machines are located within open common areas. We do not presently have any suspects. However, the office is now reviewing hospital security cameras to assist us in identifying suspects involved. In the past several days, members of the Financial Crimes Unit have attended hospitals and met with the security administrators to give updates and educational lessons on how to identify skimming devices. With the advancement of technology, we have witnessed an increase of organized crime groups being involved in financial related crimes. Recent skimming devices that have been seized from a variety of ATM machines throughout the GTA have shown that the criminal element has manufactured the devices to snap on or over the existing ATM machines, leaving the impression that the device is part of the actual machine. On the Financial Crimes webpage, we have posted 12 tips on how to help yourself from being a victim of an ATM theft. A copy, as you'll notice, was available to you and it's also sitting on the table over there. However, the best method of protection is to cup your hand closely over the keypad to block any device from capturing your PIN number as you enter it onto the keypad. Always be mindful of your surroundings when using debit and credit cards in ATM machines. Always cover the keypad when entering your password. Do not share your password with anyone. If an ATM machine appears to have been tampered with, then please call the company that owns the machine. Get in the habit of using the same ATM machine for your transactions. Become familiar with it and be able to recognize changes to the machine. Use ATM machines inside banks rather than on the street where they're easier for thieves to access. If you're visiting an unfamiliar ATM machine that is not inside a bank, examine it carefully for devices. Card or cash trapping devices need to be glued or taped to the card reader or cash dispenser. Look for extra cameras beyond the basic and generally obvious ATM security camera. Never rely on the help of strangers to retrieve a confiscated card. Never use an ATM machine when other people are lingering. Report confiscated cards immediately. If you can, don't leave the machine. Instead, call the bank from the ATM where your card was taken using a cell phone. Don't use ATM machines with extra signage or warnings posted on the machine. Never follow a link in a supposed bank email notice. If you are wondering if your bank has really contacted you via email, then close the email and directly type your bank's website address into your browser. Visit your account and look for update notices directly on your account or bank's website. The email is almost always a phishing scam. Detective Ian Nickel, who is a member of the Financial Crimes Office, is an expert in regards to skimming devices. He will now speak to you about the actual skimming devices and how they operate. These are two of the devices that have been seized recently. Uh, in, uh, in both cases, uh, these devices, both can, they both contain uh, a card reader device as well as a pinhole camera. Uh, the bottom of the device, you won't be able to notice it from your cameras. 
but there, there is a very small hole uh, which contains the pinhole camera. The device is affixed uh, above and to the right of the, of the pin pad on these devices, which enables the, the camera to capture the image of your personal identification number being entered. In this particular case, if you were to shield your, your, your pin as you're entering it, you, you would be pr protected. Uh, these devices also, they, they refer to them as two and ones because they contain both the, the card data as well as the, the pinhole video. So in, in, in the previous cases, uh, it was our experience that there would be a camera positioned somewhere above the pin pad and then a separate card reader device would be, uh, would be attached over the, over the card reader. Uh, these days, in most cases now, we're finding that it's, it's all one device, as, as you can see here. As far as the, the technology goes, these are two of the better uh, rigs that I've seen, just in terms of the way that it's been, it's been put together. Uh, clearly, they know what they're doing. Uh, that's all, all, about, all I have for you, unless somebody's got any questions. The, these particular devices, you have to retrieve them. Uh, there, are, there are some cases, such as the point of sale terminals, where they can remotely transmit, or they can transmit to a remote location, whether it's Bluetooth, wireless, uh, cellular technology. In these cases, you, you have to retrieve the device, and they'll typically be left on for an hour or two hours, but they can be left on for longer. Uh, they're, they're limited by the, I guess, the, the size of the video card uh, that's inside in terms of their, their ability to record video for a period of time, and they're also limited by their battery power. In the case of point of sale terminals, uh, you don't have those restrictions because the power is provided from within the device itself. So you have a pretty good chance of catching the window that that thing would have been attached to the machine for you to narrow Well, certainly, you know, it, it, it's our hope that they'll appear on video. Now, sometimes they take, they take steps to, you know, to, to conceal their identity. Sometimes you'll have someone blocking, they'll pull a hat down, that sort of thing. Uh, it really depends on the quality of the video and, and how, what precautions these people have taken in order to conceal themselves. Well, I mean, you say alter the machine, but in reality, I mean, if you look at these closely, you'll see there's double-sided tape. It's not really complicated. All you do is have to, you have to walk up and, and place the device uh, right over top of, of the card reader. I mean, we, we've been on surveillance on, on these types of installations where in the middle of, a, of an afternoon at, at a busy spot, and the installations occurred right in front of us. And we noticed because we were watching, but other people didn't notice you know, quite, quite clearly. They didn't notice. It's, it's not hard to do. Well, it's a lowly offense at, at the best of time. Uh, clearly, when people are going to a hospital, they have other things to worry about other than their, their financial security. So in, in this particular case, it's, it's, on the, on the, it's, it's definitely a, a lowly thing to do. Um, you know, the, the banks are the ones who ultimately will take the hit financially for this, but certainly these people will be inconvenienced. Uh, typically, your, your financial transactions will be cleared up in a matter of weeks when the financial institutions figure out that this is, this is taking place, and they always do. Nonetheless, it's, uh, it's, it's quite disconcerting when you, when you open up your bank statement and find out you have no money when you thought you had some. Are these the same sort of skimming devices as you find um, at gas stations, pay at the pump things, you know, perhaps? Uh, they're, they're similar. Every device is different. It, it real, the type of device that's utilized depends on the type of machine that, that, is, being, uh, that, that is being used. Uh, Every single type of machine has the potential to be compromised. Some are easier than others. Uh, it depends on a number of factors. It depends on how visible the machine is, the, the type of security around it, the environment that it's in, and in some cases, the physical design of the machine. Uh, some of them, uh, the, the shapes and the ridges and so on, make it very difficult to, to perform an installation. As you can see with these devices, they're, they're rectangular. There's not a lot of uh, complexity to the shape. So it's not that difficult to create a mold and then simply make the device a little bit bigger than the actual one that sits on the machine and you just paste it over. Do you have any information to suggest that the, these eight hospitals, like the suspects are related, based on what, like, what, what you found as far as the, the device safety? Certainly based on the similarity of, of the devices that, that have been seized, uh, I would suspect so, but we haven't, we haven't uh, concluded that yet. So why, why just hospitals, or do you think maybe they're well, the, that's the thing that I, I was going to point out is, is these, these types of machines don't just appear in hospitals. We, we know that hospitals are being targeted probably for the reasons that uh, Staff Inspector Evans has, has suggested is that they're busy places. There's a lot of foot traffic, and so the machines are going to be well used. Uh, therefore, your likelihood of, of obtaining profit from this, this type of activity is, is higher. You'll find these types of machines, though, in variety stores, in restaurants, in bars. 
They're, they're what we refer to as, uh, as a white label machine. They're not affiliated with any particular financial institution. Uh, they're everywhere. They're, they're throughout the city. It really, I can't tell you based on just these two devices and, and the, the other ones that we've seized, it really depends on how much, how much they were used. You know, how many people can use a bank machine in a busy area over a period of two hours? Uh, if, if it was left on for two hours and 100 people used it, then there will be 100 victims. Now, that said, uh, the financial institutions are getting better and better at, at detecting the usage or, the, or the, the usage of data associated to the installation of these devices, and quite often, uh, only a number of cards are, are, are utilized before the financial institutions ca they catch on and they shut down the cards. Uh, that said, anybody who used the machine during that period will have their card blocked. And if you happen to be uh, on vacation somewhere and that's when they decide to block it, then, then that's when you're inconvenienced. I'm sorry? How long have these devices been put there? These particular devices, how long were they on for? Well, they were, they were discovered by, by security when, when the machine was being serviced, so I'm not really sure in this case how long they were left on for. It, it could well be that the device was discovered and the culprits then left, and it could have been left on for a period of several hours, or it could have been left on for a very short period. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, can you talk about eight GTA hospitals? Like, can you put this in perspective, and from the point of view of Toronto Police, how many of the machines in, the, in Toronto, are, like right now, would you say have I, I can't. I couldn't answer that question. But what, what I would say is, we, we know of eight installations that have occurred. I mean, it would be it would be foolish for us to presume that we got every single one of them. And in, in fact, I, I believe that we didn't. So that's why we're here telling you guys about this because clearly the, the hospitals are being targeted targeted for all the reasons that we've we, we stipulated. Uh, I can't really estimate how many have been installed and how many are installed right now. But it, it's it's it, this happens every day, not just in Toronto but across the country. You found one skimming device. Yes, I, I didn't find them. We didn't find them. They were found by, uh, by hospital security. Okay, and is there any similarities between these hospitals, i.e. with the ATMs being very close to the front entrance? Or? Uh, frankly, I, I don't know. I mean, typically, these are not hard, hard installations to perform. And you, you can walk into a, a very busy area uh, under the view of security and other citizens, and by simply shielding what you're doing, uh, you'll typically see a, a two-person installation where one person stands behind and blocks the view of, of onlookers. Uh, so th these can be done in a, in a very busy spot uh, without anybody noticing. I mean, Jeff, were you finding these every day? Like your department, financial crimes, would you be spending all your time? Well, we're this? not usually out looking for them. I mean, typically. Right. But I'm saying, are people call, are you getting calls almost every day from? Well, the, the financial institutions keep us up to date. Uh, they're, they're found in a number of ways. Sometimes our officers are, are arresting people as they're being installed or removed. Sometimes citizens notice them. Sometimes they malfunction and fall off. Uh, there's a variety of ways in, w in which they're discovered. Uh, we're, we're notified either because we're on it or because we're, we're being told by the financial <coughs> institutions or, or members of the public. But yeah, pretty well every day. Listen, I, 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 use, I use my card every single day. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big, you know, big fan of, of ATMs. So it's, and this is a problem for sure, but th that said, the vast majority of financial uh, transactions occurring at ATMs go through w without problem. And, and I can say virtually 100% of, of the cases, the, the, the victim is, they get their money back from the financial institution. So yes, it's a problem, but you have to put it in perspective. This is not, you know, this is not uh, an onslaught of criminal activity. It's, a, it's, a, it's fairly defined. Any amounts Just a couple more questions. Any amounts from the banks Uh, well, we don't know what the losses are associated with this because we don't know how many of the devices have actually been installed. Uh, all we know is that of, of the eight that we've seized, presumably there were a lot more that were installed that we never recovered. That data may be sitting out there somewhere. It may have already been utilized. Uh, in, in some cases, or most cases, the, the financial institutions will ultimately determine uh, what, what machines have been, have been tampered with. And, and they'll have their own numbers, but I don't have those on, on me right now. Is it fair to say it's uh, involving hundreds of people and thousands of dollars of uh, lost revenue? Well, certainly that's the intent. I, I can't speculate as to what the losses are associated with this because I simply don't know. Okay, this